Hello everybody, I'm Charles Kanufke, I'm the Western Regional Manager for Wattstopper and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how you can take a DLM system and actually add network connectivity to it. So here's a room, we've got the simple little room, there's nothing in it right yet, so let's talk about what we want to do for DLM. We want to start adding things like a wall switch, we want to add an occupancy sensor, a room controller, and so we've shown that before on the presentation and so now we can see the items themselves appear so there's our in-room module there's everything that we need to actually have a fully functioning lighting control system and the electrician can install all that right there right at the beginning and verify everything works before anything else gets done and they move on to the next room or the next floor so the key is that everything works out of the box fastest easiest best those are the words we keep emphasizing this is a perfect example of that in action if we want to go though and now move on to communication between the devices, each one of the devices is their own little granular modular segment. We're now going to come along and we're going to add that network between all these devices. So here we see a network wire coming and flashing in and now we've got communication from room to room to room. What this does is it means that at some point we can now start thinking about putting some sort of a front end device on there to be able to talk to all those individual rooms and enunciate what's happening in the room, the time delays of the occupancy sensor, the sensitivities of it, whether or not the room's occupied or unoccupied, whether or not the teacher, let's say, inside a classroom has even turned off all the lights while they're showing a uh, presentation of some sort. We can enunciate all that and more with a network wiring system automatically. The key to that, that networking system is what we refer to as the network bridge. The network bridge is actually a fascinating device. It's a communication device that basically takes the backnet messages in and sends them into our little in-room bus. Or it takes what's happening inside the room, goes through that device, and now it goes out on the network. So it's a two-way communication. One of the keys to the network bridge is the fact that the network bridge, if you take a look at it, you don't see any uh, dip switches. You don't see any uh, little round trim pots or anything that you have to adjust. That's one of the cool things about the way that we've implemented the information. So there's no setting for it. How do you then know which room has got one device and which room has got another device? What we thought was, wouldn't it be cool is every network bridge automatically has within it its own serial number. So now what we can do is if the contractor has installed it on every device, there is a serial number that actually, here I've got a smaller network bridge, it's got the serial number on it for that device. That's great. Hopefully the contractor, as they're installing those, they'll put that number down on a plan someplace, and that way when somebody comes in and is trying to talk to 10 different rooms, they'll have the identification of each bridge. But what happens if that doesn't happen? What happens if the contractor doesn't put that information down? Well, one of the things that we have is, of course, we've got our handy-dandy little LMCT, and so I'm just going to take that, turn it on, and one of the features that I've got on the LMCT is I can actually go and I can pull up the network settings. Here we see the network settings option. I'm just going to choose that. And what it says then is it's please print this. Please point this toward any IR device inside the room and then press select. So I've got a switch that's connected to this room controller. This room controller's got a network bridge. I'm just going to go in and press this. And so there we go. Now we've actually been able to go in and we've got a clear identification of what the device ID is plus what the settings are for how it's supposed to communicate, what speed it's supposed to use, and even an additional address that can be called the uh, MSTP MAC address. Anything I want to have that I want to change, you see in the little tiny brackets, every one of those is adjustable and all I'd have to do is make the adjustment on the handheld and then hit send. And then I'd be able to send that back into the device and make those changes. So that's key because with the, uh, the networking, you want to make sure that if the contractor doesn't write down that network number, there's an easy way of being able to get it. People that I've shown this to, uh, facility engineers and uh, systems integrators, they can't believe how easy it is to go in now and be able to document a system that they already have. So let's now talk a little bit about the room controllers. What we talked about before was that on the 300 series room controller, you we were talking before about the fact it's got on-off capability through its relays. It's got 0 to 10 volt dimming capabilities. But two things that we want to point out, on the 300 series, there is a network bridge that's built in. And that's what this set of terminals is for. So here's where an integrator would be able to bring their BACnet MSTP communication wire to be able to talk to this device. 
One other way that they could be getting that is via an item like this, but this is a separate one that would normally go with something like an LMRC 102 or a 200 series. With the 300 series, you get that built in. The other device that we want to talk about in here, of course, is the CT or current transducer. Every one of these devices has got a current transducer so that you can actually see what the loads are. All right, so the network bridge module, this is a safety net for an engineer. What's cool about the little network bridge module in this format is this can be added in any time. If you've got a job that's already been laid out and already shipped and installed that uses 100 or 200 series controllers, you can always come back and add one of these. And as you see, it's just simple little standard DLM device. It's got a Cat5 connector that attaches to it. It just plugs anywhere into any port that's open in the system. And now I've got a network bridge for that room. So imagine how happy the end user is going to be if they go in and they say, well, I know we've just done this big lighting control retrofit, but I've been sitting and talking to some folks about the fact that I'm really missing the opportunity if I don't combine the lighting controls with my HVAC system. What can we do now to be able to do that? For a lot of times, the answer would have been, wow, if you, haven't, if you didn't let us know about that originally, we're not going to be able to do much about it now. The fact is, with DLM, you can always add that network bridge after the fact and now be able to talk BACnet over MSTP to anybody's system out there that understands that. So another one of the devices that we have available with the DLM system is to be able to provide relay panels that sit on that same network that connects between all the DLM individual rooms. So now we've got a relay panel for doing things like exterior lights, common area lights, things where you want to be able to have a simple relay that just turns on and off by a schedule, or we can use that relay panel and actually take a DLM switch that you've used before inside a room to connect to one of the room controllers. That switch can now go back and instead wire to a relay panel and be able to be smart wired so that the relay can be, any relay can be assigned to any button on the switch. This is a true BACnet panel. So we are actually communicating to the panel via BACnet and it will work and be able to interface to other system manufacturers as well or it can be handled as a standalone device by the Watts Doctor.